Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name's Serge. My name's James. James the Beers. Uh, so we are not sponsored by Budweiser, but if by any chance you or any family member or friend works at Budweiser and would like to sponsor Planet FPL, <laughs> the email is help at planetfpl.com. I don't know why we're on the beers today. Why not, eh? Okay, Monday. I've kind of got this little religion going now where for the main podcast, I'm cracking a beer. Main open. podcast is cracking open the beers. I've got OCD now. I'm going to collect these bottle tops. Maybe we could do something interesting with them. You'd like what a formation? Well, yeah, true. That'd be interesting. Three at the back, five at the back. <laughs> we, uh, we, this is rare for us to be recording a show before the game week's finished. Incredibly rare. But circumstances dictate that we must. We've still got Manchester United against Arsenal coming in what, two hours and 11 minutes. Why do you do that? This pod's going out after the game. It certainly is. Um, but just so people know, we don't have, I don't have my Aubameyang hat trick on my uh, score yet. So right, okay. I let people yeah. know. Yeah, cool. um, but yeah, tomorrow you've got a bit of Champions League. Some uh, yeah. German part-timers are coming to uh, White Hart Lane or that, something. That Bayern Munich definitely are not. Uh, yeah, the serious boys come into town tomorrow. Um, so we have no choice but to record today. Wednesday's a bit too late and all the rest of it. So end of game, well, kind of end of game week seven. Your game week is over. Yes. Where are you at the moment? I've had a nice little jump, mate. I am uh, currently 372k. Okay. Obviously, that's going to drop, I presume, a little bit under 400k tonight. Um, no matter what happens in that United-Arsenal game, because I think... We've seen even uh, the other week on the Monday night, the six points for Tom Heat, and I jumped like 200k. Mm. So uh, don't expect any massive drop off, but there'll, there'll certainly be a drop off in rank. I've just noticed in the Planet FPL Correspondence League that you have overtaken your wife. Uh, yeah. By one point. <laughs> by one point. So uh, I suppose a bit of normality is resumed in your house. I'm up to seventh in that league. Really? Yeah, it's not doing badly, but it's still so tight. Still I, listen, so, to be, so to be top half of that correspondent league by the end of the season is probably a good result. Yeah, These for lot sure. will know what they're doing. For sure. Uh, so 66 points. You took a hit um, to 62 nets. But what um, what were you happy with particularly? I suppose hitting a captain with BPS on Kane. Yeah, delighted with, with Harry's return as captain goal, particularly because <clears throat> I kind of stuck by my guns it, seems almost infallible to, to people who have played the game for a long time that you'd, you'd look at Kane in a fixture like that against a side that he's notoriously got a very good record against, including a, like a hat-trick a couple of years ago. And to think he's hardly getting mentioned in the captaincy stakes for the weekend. Yeah. So people falling over themselves to Captain Abraham, obviously De Bruyne, Sterling, Aguero, Salah, Mane, your usual suspects. Even quite a few guys, Sun differential. I mean, a few people messaged me back and said, "Yeah, you know, I'm on Harry as well." But weren't many of us. And no. obviously, most of the big hitting captains didn't do any better. Obviously, Treble Liverpool clean sheet, got four more points than they got me against Chelsea. I got yep. loads of congratulations this week. Not many the week before. I did see they're that in, on they're the in for their consistency. Yes. Goal for Sterling, two assists for De Bruyne, which is almost mandatory now. Uh, assist for Mason Mount. Mm. Uh, 62 <clears throat> net. Uh, for the 66, it's actually a game week rank inside the top 200k. Not bad at week. all. You know which team had an absolute stormer in the correspondent league this week? Differential so team. The differential team had an absolute oh, it's 10k game week rank. I really? Think. Yeah. I, I didn't see it. Was that, I didn't realize that it was that high. Well, it's worth mentioning because obviously, uh, like I said, a lot of the, you know, because a few well of the big me. hitters, <laughs> De Bruyne, Sterling, Kane, even you can say Sun's assist, did return at the weekend. Our differential team, which is all 79. ownership below 10%, is 79 points with Pepe still to go tonight. Wow. Um, I did right to bring in McGinn for Marshall, didn't I? Thank you, Suj. Double. Yeah. Double pushed you to do that job. Vardy captain. I'm sure I did say play Doherty, uh, even though you'd already said, yeah, I'm going to play we, Doherty. We had agreed that, that we were going to go Doherty on the yeah. Saturday morning. Doherty, 15 points as well. Matip, Siyunku, McGinn, Sun and Haller assists. And obviously Vardy's large haul. And it just shows you, if you get the right differentials in at the right time, 
you can be as template as you like, but some of these guys are what's going to make the difference to mm. your rank. And it was a good week for some differential players. Take Matt Doherty. Obviously, look, he's expensive at six million. Darling of FPL last year, 2.6% ownership. And they've got Wolves, a very interesting run of fixtures coming up after Manchester City away this weekend, where there's a good run through game weeks 9 to 16. And you know what? If I'm staying big at the back and I want a fourth high-priced midfielder, I might even defender, consider him. But yeah. Did I say midfielder? Yeah. I meant defender. Well, they he plays knew what like I meant. a bloody midfielder, doesn't he? So, well, he does. Yeah, yeah he's a winger. Absolutely. He falls as, into as that of bracket of positionally. Defenders do. Um, I had a so-so week, rescued, uh, and I've still got Aubameyang and uh, Ceballos to play tonight, so my, my game week could change quite dramatically. Um, I didn't get a clean sheet out of City, but Edison still picked up a couple of save ed additional save points. Um, I think it was his most saves in a game yeah, for Manchester City. It was crazy, and some of them were really good saves as well. Um, I got the, the same points as you. I got uh, two points for Van Dijk on bonus. You got three for Matip, but, you know... Swings and roundabouts. Um, Sterling's captaincy uh, came through late. Uh, no bonus points there. By though, about an inch. Yeah, man. But a goal is a goal, right? At <laughs> this point, is. you either want the right result. The same with offsides of VAR and all the rest of it. Um, I had uh, James Madison didn't play yesterday. And imagine the damage he could have, would have, should have done to Newcastle if he'd have played considering that 5-0 win. Maddo is going to be back next week, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and if he's not, he's not. I'll ride it out. Uh, Campwell and Pookie, blanks mm -hmm. on the fence there. Halle picked up an assist and I've got a Bamiyang playing tonight. So even if if I'm on 48 points, You've four got for Sobios a You've coming in for <coughs> yeah, Madison Sobios as well. Yeah. So four four points will take me up to 52. A goal for, for Bamiyang, 56. And I'll take 56 or 60, I think. Anywhere between that won't be too bad. I'm up to 1.875 million now. That will rise tonight in my opinion as well. Um, with these guys playing, so many people are already <clears throat> out. So if I'm 1.75 million, that's another 300,000 rise. Not a problem at all. I'll take that. We need to get your rank up. Yeah. There were marginal differences between <clears throat> my big jump in the last two, three game weeks to where you are now. So those that will follow me on Twitter will have seen on Saturday that I talked about getting my wild card out. And I whipped it out Saturday night. So I have hit the wildcard button and reshaped my squad. Do you want to tell us where it's at? Nah, I think I want to leave it a little bit in suspense. Oh, right, we'll I don't talk, know, it's up to you. Right, I can talk we'll, about we'll it. We'll talk about it Friday then. Yeah, I mean, I've been given dropping a few hints, but I've gone from 4-3-3, uh, three, three, which has been my formation every week this season so far, um, to a 3-5-2 now. Okay, that's interesting. Not three up front. Not three up front. I've okay. gone 3-5-2 at the moment. And I've gone with no Sterling, no Sane, uh, sorry, uh, Mane, no Salah, also no Sane, although someone did suggest it on Twitter, <laughs> and no Harry Kane. Okay. So I've gone without so five who the fuck massive have you got that's players. Captainable? <laughs> let's do it. So uh, I've ended up, my defence hasn't changed massively. Um, let's click on my team. I've still got Trent and Robbo. You can't go without them. I've still got Edison and I've got Otamendi. I was thinking about coming away from Edison to a cheaper keeper to give me a little bit more money, but I've kept that card up my sleeve. Edison's gone up in value and I didn't want to lose that uh, right now in case I wanted to get him back. Otamendi is one of the question marks in my squad at the moment. As a 5.5 million defender, I think there's better value to be had. And honest to God, I really want Kieran Tierney to play well because I reckon at 5.4, he's going to be a real great FPL asset. Yeah, a lot of people fed back from some of my comments on Wanda Pod last week saying, this kid's really good. Watch out for him. So, mm. all right. Yeah, 5.4. I've, I've got an eye on him. I'll see if he performs well tonight and I'm on my wild card and I fancy being a bit maverick. Uh, Otamendi may go and I'll get Kieran Tierney in. My midfield, Kevin De Bruyne, must have. Uh, Son, I think Sun's going to be really important. I wasn't going to move from Aubameyang to Kane. And game week nine and game week 12, Spurs captaincy coverage is pretty much essential for the way the fixtures are. Nine is uh, on the fence, but game week 12 uh, at home to Sheffield United, I needed Spurs coverage. And so I've gone with Sun, Madison, uh, Mount offers just incredible value. And then uh, Andre Yarmolenko, who was, also, who was my second question mark uh, alongside Otamendi, Yarmolenko and McGinn. 
Yarmolenko is due a price rise. So I'll stuck Yarmolenko in for now, knowing that I can always come down to him again. Uh, up front, I'm not moving away from Aubameyang until game week 16, maybe, if not. And then Callum Wilson's come in. He had another price rise as well. Um, and so I'm quite happy with him. On the bench, Lundstrom stayed. Kelly, who came in this weekend after injury and picked up six points. So a lot of people were saying that Kelly post-injury won't get back into the Palace team. Well, Saka's injured again. Well, so he is. That's and, why And uh, Greenwood um, at four, has dropped to 4.4. United don't have any other fit strikers as it stands at the moment. Well, so. I, we don't know at the moment. And obviously, it's a little point in saying this, but we think Rashford might actually be fit tonight. Oh, is that the rumour now? Flip that, we think wan Saka's out. <laughs> so uh, we don't know. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that yeah. in detail. So I've gone. Look, my strategy with FPL has always been to spread, spread it, spread the money a little more than go in power. But I've got Aubameyang, KDB, and Son give me captaincy coverage for the next up till game week fourteen, fifteen comfortably. And I'm happy to captain KDB, and I'm happy to captain Son, and I'm happy to captain Aubameyang. So I'm not worried. And then Madison, Mount, Callum Wilson, Yarmolenko, the, the boys at the back. I feel like it's a uh, set. For quite a while, there's no real tricky. Uh, but all these teams have got decent runs of fixtures, maybe one or two odd games in between. I mean, Liverpool probably have the toughest of all of these sides. Yeah, do you know what? It wasn't... The, only one, the only one that... See, the other thing, is, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but McGinn was that he's got a couple of good games, but then some dog fixtures thereafter. So I thought, let me leave McGinn out for now and I can come back to him a little later. Okay. Uh, when you first pulled the, the team up there, and it's my first look at it, it wasn't too keen. My my first thought was, oh, I'm not too sure on the captaincy cover there. But actually, hearing you explain it, it's all right. Mm. The other, um, yeah, the thing is, I had 100, uh, 101.2 was my squad value. Um, so when I wild carded, it dropped to 100.6. Overnight, Saturday to Sunday, it went to 100.8. And now it's gone up to 101. So I've risen 0.4 in two days and I'm almost back where my squad was before so I feel comfortable now if I'd if I'd left it a week to wild card I wouldn't have been able to afford the same team and so I thought I had to pull the trigger I don't I know from a timing point of view one week before the international break is a dog time to be wild carding because anything could happen after this this week we've got we've got Champions League in the middle of the week followed by a set of fixtures and then international break for two weeks so timing wasn't great, but value is an issue. And we can talk about value. You're at, what, 101.6? 7. 101.7. Which so. I think it's low. I don't know the statistics Possibly. on this, but I think it's low. But you made an interesting point when you were talking to me off camera about the because of the number of good value options mm. in the game at the moment, mm. your mounts, your Abrahams, Pookies, etc. cetera, um, all these guys at the back, the Liverpool yeah. guys, et cetera. Yeah that it just doesn't feel quite as important right now. But further yeah. down the line, it might feel like you need to get to a position and have De Bruyne, Salah and Sterling all together. And some will already have that. And maybe, I don't know, be able to push up from an Abraham to a Vardy, for example. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> or from a Vardy to a Kane or, or an Aubameyang to have that flexibility. So, yeah, it's going to come into to contact further down the line. One thing I'd say is the the value seeking is not so much about your your game to week game to game week play during this part of the season. It's no. almost to maximize what you can do later later on. Of course. We've I've always said to you about the strategy of be very kind of focused towards growing your value up until January. Yeah. And then beyond that, it's more of a, a transfer accumulation. I took a hit to get Abraham this week. Um, it didn't pay off. Although I had a very good week, yeah. I would have had a lot better week had I not brought him in. But since I got him in, he's up to zero point two, and he's still got this good run of fixtures. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Was that four points worth getting the extra value out of it? That's a an interesting debate. Um, is four points worth zero point one in value? There was there was a great uh, podcast from the boys at, uh, at uh, surgery probably about three or four podcasts ago. And they have, um, is it Magnus, a new guy who's been contributing the stats and, and numbers guy. And forgive me for cocking up your name because I, um, I didn't write it down at the time. But I think the stats were over the course of a season, every point one is worth 20 points. 
Okay. Um, but someone will need to check that and <laughs> remind me. So, okay, so now you've lost seven games. So it's 20 points over 38 games. So point one is like half a point a week, let's say. So you've gone up. So over the course of a season, that point two rises 40 points, but then discount it by 10 because so maybe 30 points over the season, potentially. But you need to listen back to that pod and get a pen and paper. I was gonna and say figure you just out. fucking lost me, mate. Yeah, but but the, the, it was sh- it just showed statistically squad value versus number of points. So if you every point one increase in your squad value equates to twenty points over a season. But obviously, if you only make that point one halfway through the season, you're only gonna get ten points rather than twenty points. So um, listen back to that pod with the surgery guys because um, I could be getting that quite wrong. But it was an interesting stat. Is the is it worth it? I'm I'm fascinated by um, the the overall strategy of when you when you lay out your squad. I've always been spread it thin rather than power into some and then get some budget. And I feel like after seven weeks, I've reverted back to that. Okay. I have. I don't know rightly or wrongly. I have I know, right no wrong. intention of pulling out my wild card anytime soon mm. until I'm in an. It- issue where i'm losing multiple sets of value at the same time or i come into injuries my team is very much a slow and steady mm. i'm i'm come I, I think there's every chance when liverpool have that blank in game week 18 i think it's every chance to be wild card in, in and around that time yeah uh, i've only got two Liverpool players now robo and uh, trent there is interestingly a chance as well obviously the blank is against yourselves. Correct. Which has to be rearranged. Now, West Ham, for those keeping a close eye, you might have noticed that lost marginally at Oxford United in the League mm-hmm. Cup last midweek. Were Liverpool to lose to Arsenal, in theory, that game could be scheduled for the League Cup quarter final midweek. It would make some sense if Liverpool lost to Arsenal, which you might think seems a bit far fetched. But actually, Liber- Liverpool, Liverpool be against Arsenal. B exactly, or A maybe yeah. so and Arsenal B or the kids there's a good 5-0 win against than, Forest might be stronger than Liverpool yeah, yeah quite possibly um, quite possibly it's probably with Arsenal being in Europa and Liverpool being obviously A in the Champions League and B having that tournament in at the end of December in uh, Qatar mm. they could probably do without that League Cup quarter final in early December something to keep an eye on yep so overall, I'm I'm happy what I've, with what I've wild carded into. I've been I've been tinkering with my wild card for probably the best part of three or four weeks. So there wasn't a lot of thought around it, but I'm I'm comfortable now. I've got triple city coverage, Liverpool at the back. I've got Chelsea coverage with Mount. Madison's playing well, and Leicester look like they're coming up. Yarmolenko is going to keep shooting with his left foot. Sonny is son. <laughs> Callum Wilson's returned in every game week, and Aubameyang has solid solid fixtures. So touch wood, we should all be good. Um, should we talk about some of these fixtures? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Uh, the early game, Sheffield United nil, Liverpool won. But, I mean, Sheffield United got to hold their hands up high. But apart from Dean Henderson, it needs to keep them nice and low. But Sheffield United <laughs> did particularly well. It was a very, very good performance. Um, I don't know if there's anything... <sighs> the last time Liverpool struggled like that was... Um, against Southampton and that was following the midweek game against Chelsea they had Champions League midweek last week and then they struggled again at the weekend with an early kickoff anything to read into that no I think I mean they don't rotate as much as City do and this is where strength and depth credit credit has to go to 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 Sheffield United Mm. they were very good it was it was really interesting. I only watched the first half hour, to be honest, and then I made my way towards Spurs and because I had that, that clean sheet back line going on, I didn't even look out for it, to be honest. I've watched the extended highlights back and that since. And United had some great chances. They've now got six <coughs> forwards, not just five. Leon Clark, we'd forgotten about. <laughs> They've actually got six forwards, Sheffield United. All of them are average. But for every <coughs> week where, where we've gone, oh, bad luck on that Liverpool defensive clean sheet, listen, there was luck with it this time. I mean, it was funny. This is the worst defensive Liverpool performance I've seen in a while. And it wasn't bad, bad, but they had to scramble to make saves and rescue tackles and all the rest of it. Last ditch defending, which they hadn't in other games. Yeah, they conceded. So in other games, they were much more assured and controlled and what have you. This game was like hard work for the defence. So you could say they defended better in this game because they had more to do. 
or they controlled games better defensively in previous games. But net net, they got a clean sheet here and they've conceded goals in other games. Well, Sheffield United are going to cause people tactical problems. And mm. I think they cause Liverpool tactical problems at the weekend as well. There's not many sides playing like that. So there's not... You can't really compare them to, to others in and around that area of the table. I'm certain that they'll have a big slump at some stage mm. this season and will be involved in the fight of to stay up. But I think they will. I think yeah. they've got enough quality. And, and the guys who we perhaps weren't sure of, like Lundstrom, dare I say, Fleck, who I thought what I saw of the game played really well, um, and the wing backs and the centre halves, they're all okay. Mm. And Liverpool caused Sheffield United minimal problems. Obviously, Salah's had that real big chance at the end. Amane should have scored when he hit the post in the first half and also from Van Dijk's through ball. But a lot of Sheffield United's errors, um, issues come from unforced errors. And even the goal, I mean, he saves that 99 times out of 100. It's a bit blindfolded 99 yeah. times out of 100. Mm. Um, it's funny you mentioned free. Leon Clark, the, the commentary on the Sky or BT or whatever, it was on BT, isn't it, the early game? was quite funny it was when he came on it was like his 17th club that he's played for or something like that <laughs> and uh the first is the first game in his career in the premier league despite having played for all this correct? Year. apparently that's yeah. what they said on the commentary and he hasn't scored so imagine Listen, being like 300 years old for, forget how many clubs he's played for he'd be sick for choice forward at Sheffield United <laughs> that tells you enough yeah of... and he did have a chance as well but uh no no let's talk about this Liverpool defense because we've been getting a bit of plaudits for it. I said, I said, on you put the tweet out. Where's the, where's the credit? Um, thanks for the credit. Not this week, not last week. They are now first, fifth, sixth, and eighth top point scorers. Two more weeks, and they'll be top four. Bonus point system: top Matip, second Van Dyke, fourth Trent, fifth Robbo. They're just cleaning up all of the BPS as well. When Yaldum's the only one splitting them in the middle, and that's because he scored a flipping goal. These guys didn't even do anything, not even an assist between then, them. So it's decision time a little bit, though. Leicester <laughs> at home, Manchester United away, Tottenham at home, Aston Villa away, Manchester City at home are their next five between, obviously, this Saturday and the November international break. Do I dare stay on all three? Well, I've dropped down to two, Trent and Robbo, because of the attacking threat. I've got one more defender in Otamendi at 5.5. There is every chance I'd be happy to have Matip as much. I think after Otamendi, Tierney's in my next choice at 5.4. Matip's probably third choice at 5.5. So, yeah, but I don't feel comfortable. If I've only got a three-man defence, all of them being Liverpool. But... Brave. Two, the two, you can't argue with Trent and Robbo. You no. can't argue with Trent and Robbo. So it's really whether or not you want to keep Matip. Now, where do you go? The question is, who's the, who's the next best 5.5 million option that you don't already have? I, I can answer the question now. I will be staying on them. There you go. My opinion on Liverpool is, and kind of highlights when, when we looked, particularly sort of after the Newcastle game, where I think everybody got really, you accept the goal conceded at Chelsea a little bit. Yeah. It's a difficult game. But after Willem scored in the Newcastle game, it was a little bit, oh, this is too much. But then it was the first one where we'd compared the fixtures and it had not replicated what yeah. had happened the year before. Yeah. And Liverpool do keep clean sheets. In, in, in these games last year, they kept a clean sheet at Old Trafford. They kept a clean sheet at home to Manchester City. Mm. So Liverpool, for me, any place, any time, I still believe, and this is how I feel... I feel it's a necessity for me with my structure of team. It's not necessarily for everybody else. I need to have six players in from Liverpool and Manchester City and I'm going to do everything within my power, irrespective of fixtures, to try and stay within that. Now, I don't want to go near Salah or Mane because I'm not going to captain them, certainly through that period. And I don't think a lot of others are. So yeah. I'm going to stay with those guys at the back, use the power I've got in Man City further forward with like De Bruyne and Sterling. That's my strategy. I'm not changing. I think... What's probably more of note for the listeners who a lot will have, particularly Salah, you have a major decision to make, in my opinion. Major. Because when you look at the... Uh, we've, we've spoken about kind of captaincy choices on game days when we've looked at the Sky game, which we do on Wednesdays, and said even on individual game days for that game where you can captain a player like every game day, 
we wouldn't captain Liverpool players much. So we're certainly not going to, in these games, are you going to captain uh, Salah or Mane, even though it's Leicester and at home this weekend? Would you captain them over Kane, Son or Bamiyang, Aguero, De Bruyne, Sterling? No. No, I don't think no. you are. No one's talking about captain Liverpool players till game at 13, you're, really. You're, you're not going to want to captain... Salah will almost certainly blank at Old Trafford because he always blanks in those sort of games. The following week, City are at home to Villa. You don't even need to look at anything else. Um, and then the following week, City are at home to Southampton. Don't you need to look at anything else. And then they play each other. So the power for me should right now be with, with Manchester City. That's where your main captaincy should lie. I'm taking a strategy. I'm still sticking with it. I'm going to captain Kane again next on Saturday if he's fit. And I will against Watford. And then I've got them two Man City home games, Villa and Southampton. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to go and look for Salah and Mane? No. Not. No. There's a big decision to make. I'm not saying, and I'm not suggesting that people should definitely sell. But for me, particularly with Salah, that is a really long period of time of five game weeks you're not going to captain him. Yep. Okay. I, mean, that's I agree big. with you. We saw people even not captain him at home to Newcastle because the city fixture at Norwich. That's a big chunk of your value if you're not using it. 100%. I had a, uh, a cheeky, I jumped on the uh, FPL family live stream yesterday. Now, this is my new Sunday evening thing for, I uh, obviously like to have a little listen, but what I normally do is we'll have had our dinner, kids will be asleep. And then I'd try and guilt my wife into playing FPL by showing them Lee and Sam and being like, why, why, what, look at them. They can play FPL together. Why won't you play <laughs> FPL? They're beautiful. Yeah, they can play <laughs> FPL together. But why, why won't you play FPL with me? And she won't play with my FPL at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Lee himself, being a Liverpool fan, was saying that after this game was the first time in probably a season and a half that he's had a wobble on Salah. Like he's had Salah in his team for that long and it follows the same logic. Um, and, and many members of the community are saying now, if you're not going to captain them for the next few weeks, what are we doing with these guys? It doesn't so, mean you have to sell. We have to no. reiterate that. Um, and if it saves you the transfers and you've used your wild card, what you got to remember is if you're going to want him back, it's one out and then one to back in. Yeah. But I feel, yeah, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're sitting there without Kevin De Bruyne, sort your life out, Serge. I've um, got him. Now, even still, Sterling, I think we talk about Mahrez in a bit, might yeah. even be an option as well. Uh, Villa 2, Burnley 2, Battle of the Claret and Blues, uh, second and third. The two Best main Claret, Claret and, Blues, and Blues. Really, the table don't lie. Uh, <laughs> what a game. Uh, what, what, just so many interesting um, things going on in this game. Chris Wood scores again. Um, Matt Target came on and managed to get maximum bonus points no, and so clean not sheet true. points. So, so I saw... Obviously, I came out of Spurs and you look through the bonuses and you think, oh, Matt Target's 2-2. Two, two. Oh, he must have assisted. No, he hasn't assisted. How's he on top bonus? Clean got, sheet at 61, 61 minutes. <laughs> what a Classic. Don. That that's, that's, that's the kind of points where if I'd have got them in FPL, I'd have been gloating about it because you've got to love that. However, um, it's a suspected hamstring injury for Matt Target, ouch. who I strongly recommend as and when he's fit. He's someone, I mean, if he's 4.3 further down the line, He's definitely one I'll, I'll be looking at. But they've got a, a really Dog shite one. run of, mm. of fixtures. I think people people talking about Norwich uh, away and then um, it's Brighton at home. I think Norwich away is not as easy uh, and they're not as leaky at their place as potentially people think they are. I think Norwich will be all right for that game. And then Brighton at home. I mean, again, we'll talk to talk about Brighton when we get to them, but... It's like when is it? When is that penny going to drop? I mean, they're playing all right, but they're just not getting the results. And then straight into City, Liverpool, and Wolves away. I think, yeah, I, they put me off McGinn. Having said that, yeah, I was going to say he's the boy, though, isn't he? He is the boy. Um, yeah, no doubt about it. Still five point seven million. He's now scored three goals and an assist. Because of those fixtures, people probably won't dive in on him in the way. Uh, that perhaps would have happened off the back of scoring in the last two fixtures. I think he can push for double figures in goals. He's got three so far. Three and seven at his value. He's good. You know, he scored at Arsenal. He scored at Tottenham. Yep. So BPS in the last worry, two as well. Do you need to worry so much of, about the fixtures? Obviously, Liverpool and Man City is in that, that run of upcoming fixtures. But do you need to worry about it so much? He's their most likely scorer. Mm. Definitely. It's a little bit like... You know, holding a little bit of faith in Pookie. Yeah, they've blanked Norwich in, in two games in a row, but he yep. is the most likely scorer in a team that 
let's let's judge it up again on Pookie for me after the weekend, after they played Villa at home, ironically, mm. and then see where we sit. Are we fighting to go John McGinn because they're playing Norwich? No, not. I think no. McGinn's a, a great shout. I think his ownership will increase as, as the season goes on. That jump of whatever the value a lot of people may have bought and got in on Campwell, maybe not now, but perhaps on the other side of this run for Villa, it will be worth finding a way to make that jump. I see a lot of teams fielding like Campwell and Pookie at the moment. Look, half them weeks, it's going to blank. Mm. That's two players straight up because Norwich don't look like they're going to score many goals in away games, no, right? No, no. I've I've got rid of both my Norwich assets on my wild card, which is interesting. Pookie's at seven point one, right? I only got six point nine back for him for the price I paid. Um, it was a it it was and probably still is a very close call on Yarmolenko and McGinn for me and my team. The fact that McGinn's a little bit cheaper means I can hold off and make that switch in a week or two if I really want to. Even in four weeks after, because no one's going to be buying him before City and no one's going to be buying him for Liverpool. So it's realistically, how much does he go up in the next two weeks? I can't see more than a point two rise before that. Uh, Burnley, Chris Wood on the score sheet again. Do you know his ownership now, Serge? Uh, McGinn. No, Chris Wood. Chris Wood. I uh, just clicked into him. Oh, he's got to a whole percent. <laughs> One percent. Congratulations, Chris Wood. It was, uh, it was almost inevitable that this Wood and Barnes thing would, would swap round at one stage. And by the way it probably will again back in Ashley Barnes' favour. I wouldn't be too put off if you're interested by Everton at home, Leicester away, Chelsea at home. And then there's a really nice little run up to sort of Man City at home in game week 15. I don't know. Do we just feel like there are better assets that are slightly more expensive than Wooden Barnes? It's, that feels like the take at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing with Barnes and Wood is how heavy do you want to go on the big hitters being the Salas and the Mana? Every, anyone over 10 million, let's say. If you want three, you do need to make compromises and that's where Barnes and, and, and Wood come in. It's interesting. Everybody that I know that has Barnes generally has a front two or three of cheap assets. Abraham, Pookie, Barnes, Haller. Between those those three and they've put all of their money into the midfield and have Sterling and Salah. So I think he acts as an enabler for a lot of these teams. Yes, in, in a roundabouts way. And I've, mm. I've, I've, it's absolutely all right to go with these guys. I wouldn't say mm. to anyone you've got to sell Barnes. Or, I mean, you certainly wouldn't say sell Wood now. I think that like, if you've got Barnes and you're looking at it, you're sort of kicking yourself, going, oh, shit. Like if you come in late and now it's Wood. It's a little bit like, it's a lesser extent of Salah Mane, right? One mm. week Salah will bang, the next week Mane will bang. Um, but I don't think either will bang in the next couple of weeks personally. No. But you know what I'm saying? That it will swap again back to Ashley Barnes. Just personally looking at the, the maps again from the weekend from that game. Again, they went under periods of pressure, Burnley. And again, it's Barnes that's dropping in. Woods is playing a lot higher mm. on the touch maps than that. Yep. I would go him. If I was going into one, I would go Wood. Interesting. So it would surprise as six point two. Can't believe you didn't make a joke out of that. Well, uh, that's Manchild's uh, responsibility. This is remit, is it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Woods priced at six point two. Let's talk about a six point three million pound asset. Like the segue there as we go into Bournemouth to West Ham to and Josh King pops up with a goal and assist. He scored the other week as well. Um, good game by all accounts. Could have gone either way. I think I'm happy with the result, actually, for West Ham. It feels like it's one of those games where when we went down 2-1 and then potentially kind of sort of 3-1, last season it, we would have just lost. But we've come back and taken a draw and we could have had chances to win. Um, and we've maintained this unbeaten kind of momentum and run with an away draw. I, I wouldn't have taken it at the beginning, but if you just told me Flappy's off ski for a while um, and we've got Roberto in goal, Fine, I'm going to come away with that and, and take the draw. But Josh King with a goal and assist, Callum Wilson scoring again. I mean, a lot of the big boys came up to play. And Callum Wilson, another goal. He took it well, didn't he? Mm, very good nice finish. Very similar to Harry Kane's nice goal. nice to see uh, VAR award a goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a while in waiting, yeah. isn't it? This was the first one where VAR actually overruled and gave the goal. Yeah. Um, God, it wasn't that, really nice, to be honest with you, I mean, but... <laughs> 
that was close as well. I mean, it, it was. I mean, it was onside. There's not really an argument on yeah. that. Actually, I kind of like that idea. Actually, in a roundabout way, that the linesman would put his flag up because he thinks it's offside, mm. rather than I'm not sure. Rather than the other way around. Yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah, make everyone think that it's, it's disallowed, and then if you go back after and go, actually, yeah, it's fine. Mm. He never puts the flag up to so the ball. It's a net. So it doesn't affect the play in any way. Mm. Talk to the people, mate, briefly about two people and. We'll do West Ham in a bit more detail tomorrow on Tottenham. But uh, Yarmolenko's obviously in the wild card. He is. What's the feeling, mate? 2.6% owned. Is he the obvious one to go to? At that want price, at 6 million, it's three goals in four games, um, which he started only the last five. Um, the link up with the link up with Haller looked good. Uh, is he is he a sh- assured starter? I think he is. Lanzini is only just coming back from inj- in injury, and I think for now is going to be the one that drops out. Antonio is not going to be anywhere to be seen. One in three or one in four shots that he hits with his left foot is going to end up in the back of the net. We just got to keep him shooting and keep him shooting. Is he going to get chances against Palace? I really think he will. Um, followed by Everton away. That's not going to be so easy, but then Sheffield United and Newcastle at home back to back and then Burnley away. For this little stretch up to game week 12, I think he's going to be all right. I think for those on a wild card, he is a very good player to put in, actually. Mm. I think that's a decent shout and I'd I'd support that move, actually, Suge. Yeah. But more importantly, oh dear. Flappy, we think out at least two months. So they say two to three months now. So tell, tell the people about Roberto Jimenez Gargo. 4.4 4 million. We have a playing 4.4 4 goalkeeper and for a <coughs> side that's in the top four at the moment. Yes. Um, what do you want me to say? I think... You think you uh, won't stay in the top four? No, nah, we, we will be all right. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's such said to me okay. this morning. Okay. I was gonna tell him what you said to me this morning. Such said to me this morning. Goes, James. I'm so happy. Yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. first year in ages. We've played a few games and I haven't thought we're going to get relegated. Yeah, it's the, uh, <laughs> let me rephrase that. What I said to James this morning was, this is the first time. This is the earliest in the season that I don't think we're going to get re- relegated. Big geezer, Ron Weasley. I need to pull up his Twitter. Oh, um, yeah. This is the first time. This early in the season that I'm 100% sure we're not going to get relegated. Okay. And as as much to do with... um, Fabianski. uh, As much to do with how bad Newcastle and Watford and all these guys are. (laughs) But yeah, I think we've got goals in us. So even if we concede two against Palace at the weekend, I think we can score three. You asked me about Roberto, whatever, whatever, whatever his name is. This is called him Roberto. Uh, We have a a regular question asker to the show. Big geezer Ron Weasley, Tom, who who, we had a point before the last game as well. He tweeted two days ago, Roberto is probably the worst goalie in the entire league. That's all you need to know. Okay. That's all you need to know. He's okay. not a good goalkeeper. So he is not, even though he's going to be the cheapest playing goalkeeper at the moment, he's not an option. Is that correct? You kindly reminded the listeners about our narrow defeat to Oxford last week, <laughs> Wednesday. 4-0 to a League One side yeah. who is in goal, Roberto. So if you've jumped on Issa Diop and Masuaku, my condolences. Um, it wasn't the wrong thing to do if Flappy was fit. But yeah, no. Unfortunately. So, so this is a big issue, genuinely. <coughs> yes, so 100%. 100%. We you, got... All right, let's put it a different way. You've got a good fixture this weekend, Palace yes. at home. <clears throat> who, yeah. admittedly, Palace are, we know, quite often better away from home than they are at yeah, home. Yeah, and they're stubborn in the, at the back. Do you play, if, if you've got like a... A difficult choice with, I don't know, say a Diop and a Tamori or something. Do you, do you play Diop? I'd play Tamori. All right, just, just one argument. Okay, or okay, what I'm saying is Lundstrom you, this weekend if, if you've got against if, Watford. If, if you've got Issa Diop and you've got him in a rotation, yeah. chances are you've probably got the rotation where he should play this weekend. Yeah. Is that an automatic he plays? Uh, it depends, but like Lundstrom, for example, I'd play Lundstrom ahead of any West Ham defender. Who are they played, playing this weekend? Uh, Watford. Then they've got Arsenal. Yeah. Then they've got us, West Ham. So Lundstrom now would be more of my go-to guy. I wouldn't buy Lundstrom necessarily because he's quite expensive now, 4.4, soon to be 4.5. Is but, he up to 4.4? Yeah. I've 4. just written 4. it off as one I'm going to miss. Yeah, that's done. He's 4.4, soon to be 4.5. Yeah. All right. Yeah, unfortunately. I think Bournemouth are still going to be banging in goals all season. They've scored in every game this season so far. Just a note on Bournemouth. Obviously, uh, Brian Fraser missed out again 
this weekend. Um, that wasn't selection. There was uh, it might have been an illness or a slight niggle. Bournemouth did say there, there was an issue, but he obviously he wasn't selected in the the previous game at, at Southampton either. Yeah, and obviously his contract's up in the summer. I don't know if there's a, a longer standing issue there. However. Were he to get back in the team and be performing as Ryan Fraser can, he's going to be an uber differential. I would very much keep an eye on that situation. He keeps dropping in price. He keeps dropping in price. Um, I'm just looking at price rises today. It's very quiet today, but uh, yeah, he's not due to drop anytime soon. But Ryan Fraser is definitely an interesting interesting differential. Chelsea 2, Brighton 0. This was good from Chelsea. Good. 24 shots or something like that, if I remember the stats correctly. It was a lot of shots. 10 on target. Could have been 5-0. Ended up only 2-0. The two of the good old boys. Thank God fucking Jorginho's on penalties. Over <laughs> Barkley. Uh, Barkley's not even going to be on the pitch That's anyway. quite a few people. It, seemed like no. every, it did seem like everybody on Twitter who had a good weekend seemed to have Jorginho's 11 points in their team <laughs> for some reason. Um... Callum Hudson Odoi, alternative well, to Yarmolenko, five point nine million. Alternative to Mason Mount, no, because I tell you what, you need to see million. with Hudson Odoi first is the returns. Now, I know he's got a, a return here as an assist coming on as a sub. I, you'd want to see that bit more power. I, I wouldn't say at the moment that Hudson Odoi, for example, was a better choice than McGinn or Yarmolenko. Okay. Personally, not yet, and he's going to be nursed back in. Go the team's to, playing well. The, the best choice at Chelsea for me by a distance is Mount. Yeah. Um, he's playing incredibly well. He forced him into the, the Liverpool game when he might not have been 100%. He was like, nah, you're my guy. You're playing in that area. Yeah, even it his comments after like the They game. weren't short of players. He could have played Barkley or another in there. So real onus on Mason Mount. He's playing exceptionally well as, uh, as well. All accounts, what I've heard from people was he was absolutely outstanding at the weekend. Yeah, Frank, even after the game, if you listen to his comments, was, was gushing about Mason Tammy Abraham's XG from the weekend, 1.67. No goals. That is massive. Four big chances missed. Um, quiet Callum Wilson, by the way, was second for XG at the weekend, <clears throat> 1.53. It was obviously a lot higher because he must have been shooting from further distance than he was at Southampton. Anybody who went Abraham can consider themselves incredibly unlucky. unlucky but but he's honestly. a buy and hold. He's a buy and hold. And if you captained him, <clears throat> you were incredibly unlucky as well. Mm. Yes, there's, there's no there's no panic to come off it. They've still got five great fixtures from this run of six before they play Manchester City. Uh, yeah, you, you go with arm on Abraham and Mount, and I think that will that will do me. Yeah, I. I went to Callum Wilson in my wild card, knowing that he's a couple of pips more expensive than Abraham and I can come down if I want to. Um, if I really think double Chelsea's is where it's at. I mean, their fixtures are looking tasty. I went with Callum Wilson's consistency over Abraham's potential maybe explosiveness. But by the end of this week, it wouldn't surprise me if I... It wouldn't be a shock if I went from Wilson to Mount... Uh, to Abraham, potentially. But again, I've got the option there, so I'm quite happy with that. The other interesting one with Chelsea... And we might learn a little bit more in the next 48 hours or so. So they did lose their first Champions League game to Valencia. Yeah. So they play Ajax, uh, I think it's tomorrow, isn't it? Mm. Um, obviously pressure on. And, and whether there will be, put it this way, Chelsea are not going to win the league this year. No. There will be pressure on them to A, perform well in the Champions League before B, get back in it, I think. Yep. In a, in a, in a roundabout way. So whether in the coming weeks and because of the fixture run Chelsea have, you might see a bit of rotation. Listen, it's going to happen with, with, with the sides in European competition. I think she's got to live with it. There's been some funny uh, conversations around Chelsea defence. Why are you can't so far? Manchild just walked into the room. <laughs> Who's going to kill us? I've just noticed now as well that, that him and uh, Matt Child, when they walk into the room, they're doing a very uh, aggressive manner. aggressive way. You know, like we're, we're, we're trying to record a podcast over here. Just open the door quietly. Have a sense of purpose. All right. Your team did all right this week. 50 points, just so you know, because I know you don't log into FPL. Thanks, My pleasure. Uh, Ake scored a goal again. Uh, got an assist this time. And Ake had a, and had a goal disallowed. He was okay. He was okay this weekend. Ake. He was okay this Ake. weekend. <laughs> um, defense. So Alonso bombing down. No end product. But as Pelaquetta potentially playing well, Tamori being the real budget option. Uh, I'm annoyed about Tamori being 4.6 rather than 4.5. 
that little price jump. Has, he's only still 3% owned, though. Uh, I don't think you, you can justify Alonso and Aspilicueta at their prices. What's Alonso's um, numbers? Uh, in terms of ownership. And price now. 6.2 now. Start yeah. the season at 6.5 yeah. and 2.6% owned. Wow. I mean... If you're going to dive someone in for a few weeks, I don't know the extent of Emerson's injury, but you could do a lot worse than box. I don't think it's too long weeks. for Emerson. I think it's a couple of weeks max. Is so, that all? Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, fine. It's possibly a transfer you need to do. But what if he gets in the team and performs <clears throat> really well? Okay, yeah, we know true. he's shit defensively and Chelsea can't afford to be carrying players mm. like that. What does Lampard care? We don't, I don't we, know. We don't, <laughs> we don't know. This was very good for them. Brighton were way too open in a similar way they were too open when they went to Manchester City and come out of the game for credit. You know, they had, a, I think, Gross had a deflected effort at 1-0, but it would have yep. been a bit of a robbery on Chelsea if they'd got something out of this. It'd be interesting to see if Brighton, and I anticipate they will, continue to be as brave on the ball as they have been when they mm. play my team on Saturday. We have FPL Seagull on Clash of the Correspondents on Thursday. I will be keen to test him and see what he thinks i imagine he's very happy with the way it's going yeah albeit the the, res the results are not there it's a bit of a albeit struggle like we said, it's now six without a win right One and thing they I went out say, the cup yeah i was um thinking about this yesterday as, as kind of preparing any kind of loose thoughts for the show last season in the last 10 12 game weeks we'd got to the point where there were certain clubs that we really glossed over because we knew we weren't picking any players from them from an FPL point of view and they weren't of interest. Huddersfield obviously being very What, like obvious. Shane Duffy double game week? <laughs> <laughs> but this early in the season, I also feel like Newcastle and Watford were just glossing over because we're not, we're not looking at them at all. Brighton are still down there, but I don't feel that way about Brighton. I feel like it's a matter of only a matter of time with Brighton before they are back in the conversation. So I'm not all down and out about Brighton. But it's got to turn around sooner rather than later. Mm, that, that's the thing. You can have all the plaudits in the world. At some point, <clears throat> you've got to start getting results. And suddenly you look back at it and go, OK, well, they beat the bottom side on the opening day. Big deal. They've got three home out of the next four. Tottenham, Everton, Norwich. In, in amongst that, Villa away. But then after that, <sighs> United, Leicester, Liverpool, Arsenal, with three of those four away. Tough run. So... Brighton would look at even the Tottenham game this weekend, I think, as it's at home and think, we've got to start getting results. Suddenly they don't win against us at, at the weekend and they'd, you'd probably, they'd probably take a draw if you offered it now. Mm. But then the three after, Villa away, Everton home, Norwich at home, got to be doing some damage. Or suddenly they're two weeks off Christmas and they'll be in the bottom three, definitely, yeah. in spite yeah. of how well we think they're playing. Indeed. Um, time for a little bit of trivia because I wanted to bring this up when we discussed one of the earlier games, forgot about it, and it you just remembered. came back to my mind, James. Um, which, who is the only goalkeeper to have had a price rise this since the end of last game week, this game week, as we stand right in the end of game last game week. week. So, so now, in this game week, whilst in the game week... It's from Fabianski, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that. Lucas Fabianski has <laughs> gone from 5 million to 5.1, <laughs> and he's fucking out for three months. It's just mad. It's just mad how this happens. Palace had to bring on their... Uh, uh, Gator had to come on, right, um, in this game. No? Gator's um, their number one. What are you talking about? Uh, why was I confused thinking their goalkeeper? Norwich keeper. Oh, uh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I... For and McGovern. So the second choice goalkeeper came on. The third choice came on for the second choice. And now we don't know when to crawl back. Not for a while. I'm going to be honest with you. All three of them Norwich goalkeepers are shit, shit. including Tim Krull. Uh, yes. Sorry. Milivojevic did as Milivojevic does. He scored a penalty. Um, it's got that way, you know, sometimes when people hit goals and it hits the stanchion, it's just got a ping kind of sound. It's shock of the, of, the shock of the weekend was that it yeah. wasn't won by Wilfred Zaha. <laughs> no, Although but he did, he did pick up did an assist. create a lovely goal for Andros Townsend. I don't know, Palace... Palace have joined West Ham mm. as the joint leaders in clean sheets this season so far. I don't far. know why I should be mayor about Palace. I'm probably quite influenced by what I've personally seen of Palace this season, which is not turn up at Sheffield United and get battered at Tottenham. That's that's what I've seen of Palace this year. They've live. shut out Everton, they've shut out Villa, and they've shut out Norwich. Two of these are promoted sides. And a very late goal from shutting out Wolves as well. Yeah. So I think against some of these, some of the, the teams in the lower half of the table, I've, I hate sounding derogatory, but lower half of the team tables, I think they're going to be hard to, to beat. 
Um, so I'm interested. This weekend's game is going to be fascinating. It's a later kickoff, five thirty West Ham. Should pull Palace. up Palace fi fixtures for us. Fixtures, uh, rough. Ooh. So they got us away, and then City at home, Arsenal away, Leicester at home, Chelsea away, Liverpool at home, and then they come into that. It's Burnley away, very good run, and an outstanding set of fixtures in December. Their Christmas I, period is fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. I've been, uh, will, will, will Sahar come December? Is he going to be motivated? Is he going to get to the point where Sanchez was like, no, oh, don't give a fuck? Mm. Or is he going to be motivated either personally because he's got pride in what he's doing and he should he should have a great affinity for that football club because he's been there so long. And also the double of, right, if I start playing well, these guys are going to have to come and fucking buy me. Mm. The ownership on Wilf Zaha is still pretty decent, 9.6%. started very high. Mm. Very high. So it might be in a lot I'll of dead honest, teams. To be honest, I think there were a lot of dead teams come game week one who were dead, who'd set up their team in July, who'd forgotten <clears> about him and he was in there. Yeah, quite possibly. Norwich, Pookie Blanks again. Um, Don't worry, now... good news, they're at home this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the um, yeah, the, the, the consensus is they sc he scores at home and they do well at home and he doesn't score away. I'm not, I'm not fully sold on that yet. Which Free is why I'm happy to let him go. I've, I've, Look at the next five, and I think you, you come through with me till then, and then I make a decision. Next five home games or next five next games full stop? Five games up until when they play Watford on that Friday night in early mm -hmm. November. We've got Villa at home, Bournemouth away, United at home, Brighton away, Watford at home. Thinking of how open Bournemouth and Brighton are at the moment, and if he is going to return in a away game, you couldn't ask for too much better than that. And United at home is just not a worry at the moment in terms of can Pookie return you wouldn't leave him out would you no he plays no. well I left him so, out against City and got hurt so I, think, I wouldn't but I'm the, I don't own him and, anymore unless so. I come to issues where I need to start fucking about with probably my Man City players to maybe move budget wise um, Pookie would be staying with me for a while mm. let's talk about Spurs 2 Southampton 1 give us the, uh, the summary for the regular listeners that will know we do Tot and Ham every Tuesday where we go into a bit uh, more detail Summary. A long summary. Um, bit of a car crash <laughs> for a yeah. little bit. Aurier. Um, uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah. Aurier. We, I, I can't pronounce his name. I feel like I'm just pronouncing a cookie every time. A biscuit. Oreo. Oreo. Serge Oreo. Oreo. Try Toby Alderweireld. 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 Oh. Dan Cox. Toby Alderweireld. Dan Cox would be happy because he can't fucking say it <laughs> either. Alderweireld. Uh, Serge Aurier is, unfortunately, I know a lot of people gambled and, and went in. We did try and say careful mm. um, although obviously you can't foresee that happening I've seen quite a few teams with Aurea and Hayden in yeah <laughs> that's a nice weekend painful isn't it? yeah you've been unlucky because yes it looked like the shirt was his however let me close it by saying this the best right back at Tottenham is Musa Sissoko okay and that tells you probably what you need to know about the others and if you should go in mm. Harry Kane was absolutely fantastic at the weekend Forget the goal scoring numbers, his hold up play. He took on a real, you know, when we said it's a little bit like, it felt like he's been save, preserving energy a little bit in certain games. And he did it again on Saturday. But his hold up play, single hand, he was worrying Southampton. He had one moment in the second half, people probably seen the, the shot he had that he, he dragged wide. I mean, that, when, in that moment, just look at how he turned and you look at that. Pete Kane, that. Yeah. Yeah, be my captain again Saturday, mate. I think for Kane and Son owners here, I think, obviously, if it wasn't for the red card, I think there were returns on the board here. And it's not a game you can assess Spurs on. You can assess Southampton a little bit, who have got a shitty run of fixtures. I don't think you're looking at. I think it's disappointing from them because they could have done more. I was sitting there with about 20 minutes to go and I was thinking, do you know what? If I could handpick a team to have to be down to 10 men against in this situation, Southampton would be right near the top of this. Mm. Because they're, they're nice. They don't put balls into the box. So the, only, the only one who's in the air is good is, is Yoshida. Yeah, and he had that chance. He did have a good the, header and Loris save. kind of redeems the monumental yep. fuck up with a brilliant save. Um, uh, if you're on Vestergaard, I don't know why you're on Vestergaard, but just a note on that, that he might have gone unnoticed because he played at the weekend, but Cedric was in the original team, got injured in the warm-up. And I think Southampton completely changed system from how they were going to play. Change. 
Um, and actually Spurs changed formation within 10 minutes of kickoff as well because Southampton started really well. They're a good pressing team. They need a game to be high energy. When a team's going to sit off them like that and say, go on, have it. No good. They haven't got really the, the quality or the players in the team for you to believe like they can they're going to break, break down. someone down. And also, longer term thinking about it, it doesn't make their assets appealing even when the fixtures do swing, actually. No. Um, you had a great stat on Danny Ings. I think. Oh, <laughs> Danny, it wasn't even you. a stat, but I think, <laughs> what, Danny Ings picked up max bonus points, right? How many goals has Danny Ings scored this season? <laughs> Two, Two goals. How many times has the opposition goalkeeper <laughs> passed the ball to Danny Ings twice? <laughs> you might argue that... Um, Adrian, Lloris wasn't Adrian, passing it. Though. Adrian and Hugo Lloris have provided Southampton with their two best assists. This, this season. season. <laughs> Mental. Um, but how he managed to nick maximum bonus points this weekend, I do not know. But Redmond, he did. Redmond started up front. Yeah. Tell me about Sun, because I've got Sun on my wild card. I had Kane at the start of the season. Cheaper option. You've been talking about so, Sonny. Playing as a striker. Again, don't look into this too much at the weekend because... I think what happened was Southampton picked a team that, in my opinion, was a back four, hmm. I think. And then Vestergaard came into Cedric and they went back to a back three. Now, I think Pochettino's obviously planned for one or the other. And he picked a team that was freely movable. Yep. So he picked Ericsson behind Son and Kane. It was a 4 3 one, two to start with. Within 10 minutes, Sissoko went out to the right. Some went out to the left. And then obviously 20 minutes later, you've got the red card and Sun stuck playing wide on the left and did a lot of defensive work to come back with um, initially Ward Prowse, who was playing wing back in the first half, and then Bednarek, uh, who, who went Southampton, then reverted back to a back four again in the second half. So don't judge Sun on anything statistically you've seen from the weekend. If you got him in, you got him in for a reason. It's fine. Yeah. He could well be back up front the weekend. I guess the caution is a lot of people have mentioned he plays for South Korea against North Korea in a couple of days in the run-up to the home fixture against Watford, which is appealing in game week nine. And with Champions League straight after that, again, there's every chance that he wouldn't start that game week nine fixture. Mm. Let's talk about Watford two, uh, Wat Wolves two, Watford nil. Which has just nil. blown up Suji's wild card and his captaincy options for that game. Storming in again, this man chance. Oh, Crack on. Now, should we put a sign on the door that says "Open with care"? <laughs> Wolves two, Watford nil. Doherty, Doherty, Doherty. Let's start this whole twenty starting the train 2018, up again. 19 mispronunciation headache again. Doherty, Doherty, Matt. We just called him Matt. I want to talk about both of these two in terms of their fixture runs a little bit, and Doherty. Jota, Jimenez, Jota's 6.2 now. It's got a little niggle. Jimenez down to 7.2. And the doc, although he's still 6 million, I don't know how he stayed at 6 million because he's hardly been well, fucking playing. no one bought him, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So there is that, I suppose. 2.6%. And yeah, that's he's, he's an ad differential team and that's about it. I don't know. There's a run of fixtures. Obviously, they play City this weekend. Yeah. There's a run of fixtures afterwards that's really appealing. Do we, Very good. Do we just, do we just <clears throat> stay off because of that Europa bollocks? Is that where, what we feel yeah. about it? Yeah, yeah. for or me, does, I'm not going anywhere near it. Do Jota or Jimenez get to... I know, again, Jota didn't play at the weekend. Do we get to a price where we, we have to start considering them again? Uh, no. For the, not for me. I'm not touching Just wolves. avoid them because they're in Europe. Uh, yeah. They don't have the depths to cope with both. I think that might be what a happened last bit... week. They didn't play midweek, did they? Or did they have uh, uh, a league cup? League uh, they cup. changed the whole team against Reading. So don't play midweek. Finally, they can pull out a result of the weekend. I think it might be a little bit misguided, particularly with Doherty, because Traore's position has changed the last few games. Yeah. Interestingly, Neves didn't start again. Um, but it, this is more back to what we saw from them start of last season with uh, essentially two off of Jimenez and Traore playing quite high. And Traore playing higher has allowed Doherty back into the team. But who's who's um, who's so? You've got the Liverpool defenders at seven million and six and a half million. Then you've got Otamendi, Zinchenko, even Matip, the Spurs guys, the Chelsea guys at five and a half and below. There's this kind of middle area where you've got Doherty at six million, and then Azpilicueta and Alonso and whoever else. Okay, yeah. You just you'd go with the City guys or Matip even, or any of the Chelsea um, Tottenham guys maybe even. 
yeah, he doesn't. He sits in this no man's land at the moment of six million, and not many people have that much flush cash lying around. But when he hits, he hits, doesn't he? Of course he does. He really does. Of course he does. If five point five, I'd put him in ahead of Otamendi, for example. Interesting. It's for- just six million that puts him a bit expensive. Interestingly, on this as well, this is the first time Wolves have gone in front this season, mm. and I think it showed a little bit because even in this. They ceded territory and ceded uh, possession to a Watford side that wasn't really obviously good enough to break them down. But expect Wolves, I would say, to spot, start games fast in the next couple of weeks and then try and sit off. And mm-hmm. um, perhaps not at Manchester City this weekend, but I think you know what I'm saying. On Watford, oof, I realise this seems a bit dark at the moment, and I get that. Um, but we did, when we spoke to Stephen at sixth goal, when he came on with Adam at 3 5 before they played uh, Arsenal in game week five, we kind of all agreed that like those first three fixtures, Arsenal, Man City, Wolves, tough runner start. If you'd have offered them a point probably before those three games, it might have even took it. Yep. Considering how bad the start was. They have some home games coming up. Sheffield United, Bournemouth, Chelsea, Burnley, where I think, even further ahead, Palace, sort of in a run up to Christmas, where they they've they've got to be picking up some points, and I think they will. Um, even away games, Spurs, then Norwich, Southampton, Leicester, before Liverpool in game week seventeen. It's not a disaster of a run. That's all I'm saying. Obviously, you're not going to go and buy their players, but Danny Welbeck in the team, I feel it made a difference. Five point nine as a forward, but he's just <coughs> never going to get the returns. I'd be more interested in. Ishmael Saar, if he wasn't 6.3 million, <laughs> it's just too expensive. All I'm saying is, it's probably more for your assets playing against them. I wouldn't judge too much what's happened so far. Ask me again next week about them. They'll give Sheffield United a game this weekend. It'd be a different test for Sheffield United because there'd be an expectation on them to go and get a result. I think so. Everton 1, Man City 3. Um, Everton will be getting a lot of credit from this game. Um and they were better, but I don't know if I'd be thinking that Everton are suddenly. I don't. I okay. I don't know to be honest. I'd, I'd be interested in your opinion. If you if, if you look at some of the tweets and so I know some Everton yes, fans spot are on here, yeah. a little bit more negative, but they're like it's all well and good playing better, but we still got beat three um, one. The one thing that I really disagree with, and if you are an Everton fan, feel free to to tweet me or whatever. But the point that a lot were making was, well, Norwich managed to beat them. That's so, crap. Exactly. And I'm like, well, hang on a second. This is an amazing Manchester City team. Norwich didn't, did, did well. I'm collecting. We're going to hear all them clunkies on this podcast. You know that. If you can hear clunking, you thought, what's that noise for the last 10 minutes? It's Suj playing with bottle, bottle caps. tops. Um, I don't think that it was that much. I mean, okay, when you lose a player after two minutes and everything you've planned in the in the build-up to the game has an impact, but um, Theo Walcott can come and join Jack Wilshire on the injury table now. Strange one, Walcott. I mean, it felt it's quite bad, out. obviously. He just was got so disorientated, out. wasn't he? Yeah. I, um, I, I don't... I'm, I'm not looking at I mean, Everton I don't know what the strategical <laughs> plan was to play Walcott in that fixture. I don't know what the thinking was there. Pace to get at Zinchenko, maybe? Is quicker than he will be now? I don't know. And you're moving Richarlison from a position that he's been doing all right in. So was mm. was the idea to play Richarlison up against Cole Walker? Doesn't seem to make too much sense, really. No. And then Iwobi come on and they changed that anyway. Yeah. So I don't know what, what the plan or the thinking was there. And that's probably more the point. <clears throat> is Everton fans thinking, well, what was the plan here? Essentially, the game became chaotic because, and it was a really good watch, it became chaotic because Man City are shite defensively. Yeah. That's why it become chaotic. And Everton started realising that if, you know, just started playing a, a little bit more direct. Yeah. And from set piece, I think Mina had the fifth highest XG at the weekend. I might have that wrong, but he was, he was certainly in the top seven or eight or so. Is it any fucking wonder when the guy's a giant and Zinchenko's marking him on every yeah, corner? True. I don't get that from Guardiola. Like, please explain that to me. Mina did what Mina does. He tried to this time. He tried to fight with Sterling. <laughs> Come on, man! You can't fight with Sterling. That's not like me going home and picking a fight with my seven-year-old. I'm obviously going to kick the shit out of him because he is four foot tall. 
but Mina does make me laugh. What he's he's a red card waiting to happen. If Aurier is a red red card, I'll tell you what. I hope game is. game week twelve that Zinchenko is marking Matip. That's all I got to say about <laughs> that. Yeah, I mean that's astonishing. What's what's he thinking there? At least like Ottomendi's is chaos, isn't he? Yeah, but actually in the air, considering he's not the tallest, he's decent. Rodri's decent in the air. Even Fernandinho's not the beast. Decent in the air. De Bruyne is good in the air. Mm. You're putting Zinchenko on their best header. What? I don't... What is that? I don't get it. So, City are going to concede goals. Yep. <clears throat> Two goal scorers for, for City. Jesus, 1.5% owned. Mares, 3.3% <laughs> owned. We talked about it last week with uh, uh, Bernardo Silva. There's like less than 10%. David Silva, less than 7%. Up front, they are causing chaos. 27 goals in eight games or seven games. It's is no the most joke. ever since yeah. Everton they in the They are not summer. fucking about this season. But from an FPL point of view, it's, it's being spread around all over the place. All over so the place. there is an argument at the moment to get a Mares, Bernardo Silva, David Silva and accept that probably every other week you're going to have a one-pointer because on the other week they'll hit your double digits. Yes. And actually, if you could give me a, a Mares 11 points every week and the one the week after, I'd probably take that as well. The problem is it just very, it could very quickly be three ones in a row, couldn't it? Yeah. You just never really know. I thought Riyad Mahrez was absolutely brilliant on Saturday. For me, he was the second best player on the pitch. And uh, that's high praise. The the ones have come... So he scored 14 points in game week one. Then a one, a one, which was 10 minutes and 11 minutes, respectively. Three against uh, Brighton. They were already 4-0 at that stage. Um, one, 17 minutes against Norwich. But then he's played 90 minutes again, a 15 and a 10. Well, when he plays, he is class. And there were question marks when he moved from Leicester to City on whether or not he would make that step up. I don't think there are any question marks now. He, he's 100% worthy you know, and good enough to be well. in that City team. He's work rate. Yeah, man. He's, he's, he's realised if he wants to be in that team, he's got to work hard. I'd actually look at him having mm. played 90 minutes in the last two games and that would concern me. Yeah, that's the annoying <laughs> thing, isn't it? Uh, I think our friend uh, Neil, uh, Ronil Dino, must be super happy because he got retweeted or replied to by the official FPL account. Did you see that? I did it. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, muted. They, I wouldn't they, know. Uh, they put out um, who who is the must-have person in FPL right now and his reply is whoever has access to Pep's team sheet because that is the ultimate gold at the moment right who knows who's going to play for City week in week so in out. the last three game weeks we've had De Bruyne miss out Norwich Sterling against Watford Aguero this week against Everton back who's to KDB it gonna, who's now, it going to be this week it's, it's back to KDB it'd probably be fucking Mahrez wouldn't it nah, back to KDB KDB surely. obviously it's, it's a little bit of a blessing that City have a Champions League game this week the suggestion that I saw around about five o'clock today was that De Bruyne had not trained with Manchester City. However, they are in a pokey fucking group that they'll piss through anyway. It's not the fixtures he needs to take any risks with De Bruyne. So, no. that if he's fit for the weekend, he'll play at the weekend. De Bruyne ain't going to get left out once. What's what's the the caveat to those who got left out? They won the games without the others. They didn't fucking win the one when they left the Bruin out. Exactly. Mm. He, he, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, there's no words. Move I on. Just, I just want to lick it's, that man. He's <laughs> such, a, such a guy. Um, and he does it, it with is, class. I was actually having a debate with someone. And with this class. is very, very far-fetched. But I, I, and I'm not saying he's better than Messi or anything like that. But when, he, when he's playing like he's playing at the moment, I don't know if there's anyone better in any position. But that's... the. the the all-round nature of the game is what makes him that and much better. For this FPL, I mean, there were times it felt to me that City were integrating between... They obviously very commonly play this 4-3-3. Three, three. There were stages in the game where De Bruyne got so far advanced, I was I was wondering if it was becoming 4-2-3-1. It was 4-2-3-1 one. It was 4 2 Because he one wasn't tracking back. Four, two, three, he was sitting there in that hole... My God, imagine him playing like Gundogan at Gundogan and uh, Rodrigo. Well, probably Rodri. when it's the two of them together, Gundogan and Rodri, you might see that balance a little bit more where they try mm. that. Where Obviously, I think if it was, say, David Silva rather than Gundogan, 
I don't think you'd see him try and evolve into more of that 4-2-3-1. But something to watch, you might see more of that from City. Um, get Kevin De Bruyne in your team. Like, just fuck, just do it. Uh, well, I don't think we're speaking to um, that many people now because at 43.3% ownership. Would it, I mean, there's even that alone, just block people now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 63 points from seven just, games. Just go with it. It's an average of nine points per game so far. He won't keep that up. That's the caveat. He won't keep that up at nine points a game. I can see everybody going, now, why not, James? Well, yes. Why not? Is That's going to leave him finishing on 380 FPL points. He's not going to finish on 380 FPL points. Do you think he will finish on more than 300? No. no. Fancy a little bet on that? Yeah. 50p. I reckon he'll finish <laughs> on more than 300 FPL points. I was going to offer you half the money that Sham's going to owe me for the Jack Wilshire bet. <laughs> 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 Just sub it on to you. Um, De Let's Bruyne, talk about... Oh, go on. I think if you're an owner of De Bruyne, like 200 plus would be fine, mate. No. Even no, despite no, of what no, he's on. No. Yeah. No. I think I think based on the ability and what he's going to do, he's a 12, 12 and a half million pound player priced at nine and a half, now 10. Got to be all over him. Is he though? 250 points. Don't forget, he's been out for so long. And the problem is because he plays for City rather than... I'll say it, Spurs, for example, you can't just go and directly target De Bruyne to stop him. Everyone else. Like people have done with, say, yeah. a Kane or a Son in yeah. certain games. Yeah. yeah. Fucking go, man, Mark De Bruyne. Just give it, you know, someone else will play through you. You can't yeah, play yeah. that way against City. Mm. Let's talk about the last game because we need to wrap up at some point to get home in time for this kickoff, which is now. And we've got to do some minutes. Twitter cues. Right, oh, Leicester, Leicester are really good. Don't buy their players this week. They're playing Liverpool, but afterwards, get them in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, um, there's all the all assets are, are interesting on uh, the old uh, Leicester. Essentially, it boils down to three. I, look, Ricardo Pereira and Ben Chilwell are both going to be good FPL assets. Yeah. Um, but... At Siunku's price, I don't really don't think you can go for like Pereira, for example. Madison, I know you're really, really keen on Surge. I mean, yeah. That's completely understandable. I think Jamie Vardy is a captainable option in some of the upcoming game weeks. I genuinely believe that. It's still 8.9 million as well. I know well. a few people who Cheap. captained him yesterday. Well done. Congratulations. What I've always said, because I see people now and say like, the Abraham Buki Barnes, kind of that free. The one thing I've always maintained is I, I don't want my main man to be any lower than Jamie Vardy. Mm -hmm. I would always need at least Jamie Vardy touching distance to be able to move to Kane Aguero or come down if I want to. That's my recommendation. If I could recommend that is have a forward at Jamie Vardy's price or above. That that would be a tip that yep. I would have to people right yep. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if that's Jamie Vardy, it's fine. Mm. So you put a tweet out. Newcastle. 55. Oh, fucking yeah. shite, mate. Forget no that. complaints on that red card. Um, did Casper Schmeichel play yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. They can't uh, have excuses, even with losing uh, Hayden, and it was a red card. Have they even won a game this season, Newcastle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to put it in there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. You put this tweet out 55 minutes ago. Might be the asking, only one. They'll go down and only win two games and be against us, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you put a tweet out 55 minutes ago asking for questions and you have had 49 replies already. Actually, we don't have time to I get I actually 49 forgot questions. to send the tweet out. It's just as well I did. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Dan FF. No question, but keep up the good work both. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dan. Much. Well, there's no point reading that Next, one out. Next. Uh, <laughs> FPL addict, Chris, our friend Chris. Anything in Ericsson not celebrating the goal with Kame? He seems the worst kept secret that he's going to leave. Is it affecting the squad's morale? Yeah, well, Vertonghen shagging Ericsson's wife. Uh, that's it. Is that true? <laughs> so some alleged rumours are that's going oh, about. Fair play. And Kane got involved and that's why Vertonghen got a back eye. I don't know if Kane was there and he was watching. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's all probably bollocks, but yeah, believe what you want. Um, um, <laughs> And Christian Eriksen needs to step up, but he also needs to be played through this period, I think. Yeah. He's seen, even if Eriksen does want to leave, similarly with Zahar, he's seen Eriksen's benefit to start playing well. Yeah. Because unfortunately for Zahar, as good as he's been at times, uh, no disrespect to our Everton followers, but that's nearly where Wilfred Zahar ended up was Everton. I don't think Wilfred Zahar set out last summer to be going to Everton. I think he was looking at like at least European football. 
or some sort of qualification. Um, Christian Eriksen doesn't want to be in a position where he's out of contract next year and he's ending up at, I don't know, an Inter Milan and he's on city money. Yeah, great. That's not the career move that Christian Eriksen is looking for. So uh, him playing well is to his own benefit. No. Next question. The next question is coming in from Sean McCall. <laughs> You're going to be wondering, why did I have a picture of a uh, fat Ronaldo? I was screen? wondering what you were doing. If Kevin De Bruyne is the second coming of Jesus, who's Gabriel Jesus the second coming of? And I was going to say, he's basically a skinny fat Ronaldo, isn't he? It's... His face is a little bit similar. His I was going to teeth... be harsh and say Fred. Not, His teeth not, a bit not the, the Man United one, the one that played in the 2014 <laughs> World Cup from Brazil. Yeah, I'm going to go out and say that Gabriel Jesus is the second coming of a skinny... He's... He's a, he's a good player, Jesus. The Very good player. The problem is, and it's noticeable that like, so Guardiola has said that Aguero complained that he had a little niggle and that's why he perhaps didn't start at the weekend. When City had to turn the game around, he didn't go to two of them up front. Even though Jesus had scored, he took him off. Oh. Yeah. I think that's, you can read into that. Obviously, there's games where Aguero is going to get left out. And by the way, the easier the fixture, the more likely that he is. Mm. Uh, Ian at Fantasian. PL wants to know, is Alonso worth a short-term punt? His XG numbers look promising in the last two matches. Of course his XG numbers He's look quite good. taking a lot what of shots. His, what does his XGC numbers look like? Yeah, true. Um, I remember a period the, uh, for last season where he was hitting the post and having shots and shots saved, and it never ended up translating into actual points, and so I ended up subbing him out. Um, he does take a lot of shots. He's on free kicks sometimes and all the rest if of it. You, Not if for you me. could say to me that... Um, Emerson was out till <clears throat> mid to late November. Yeah. I would strongly consider Marcus Alonso. Even at that price? Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, if you want to listen to James, but um, I'm saying no. But we don't think Emerson's out that long, so it doesn't matter. Mm, that's true. Ronan Mehigan. And Ronan, you've asked three questions. Come on, mate. Stop being cheeky. There's only one at a time. And one. I am going to ask this question because it's the shortest <laughs> Rather okay. than the longest. That may be a tip to all listeners. Keep your, keep your questions short so uh, my lazy ass will read them. It is true. The shorter and the punchier and the funnier, the more likely they're going to get read mm. out. This is Go. for you as well, so I didn't even have to answer it. Has James begun to plan a replacement for Tom Heaton when Villa's fixtures become difficult from game week 10? Or will you be sitting on It's a good on question. A, save I, points? I do have Tom Heaton. Um, no, I have not started planning. It's the least important position in my team and I'm just not that worried about it. Yeah. I might even go to Roberto. <clears throat> Not. <laughs> um, no. If uh, Yes, there is a big fixture swing that turns bad for Aston Villa, which includes, I think it's Liverpool and City back to back. And yeah, I don't particularly want him sitting in my team. But if I've got other fires to put out, I'll put them out first. And I'll just leave Tom Heaton. Because, he, he, you know, he might concede three or four and he might still get three or four points. Mm. Milan Dobricic, uh, who says, West Ham without Fabianski, well, question we've mark. We've done that. Fucked. No, nah, wait, we're going to be, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be harder to close that nine-point gap on Liverpool, uh, admittedly, but we'll give it our best shot. We should be there or thereabouts when when our rearranged game with them comes up. It'll be a top-of-the-table clash. It's just not funny, Sid. No, nah, I think we've got, we got to believe. We have to believe. Yeah, there's ben, extents. Benjamin what Miller. You, what I told you was... Don't be happy with a point at Bournemouth, is what I said to you. <laughs> and what was the first thing I saw in the interviews of Masha Day? The fucking manager. We're happy with the point. Well, Next question. He Next wasn't, question. I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy that they were happy. Uh, change, he was your, change your mentality. He was pretty pissed off with Eddie Howe trying to get yellow the cards. The opportunity and is there. At the moment, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs, Man United all have problems. This opportunity is not going to yeah, come again. I, I, I don't know... The, the, the thing with is with hindsight, right? You're never going to know. If we'd have played the whole game against Villa with 11 men, could we have? If Flappy had stayed on the pitch, could we have? You never know, right? But uh, with those things in consideration, and last year we lost at Bournemouth, I, I asked myself, are we moving forward? And I, and I think we are. But let's get some more questions in. Benjamin J. Miller. Ben, how you doing? Hi, guys. Hope you're all well. First... Uh, a good time to roll a transfer this weekend with the international break on the horizon. Yeah. It's always nice thought, to go into Ivy. I going to read the short questions. Uh, Love you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, do you like rolling your transfers into um, international breaks as a rule? To have two? Um, 
we haven't discussed what I'm going to do next week. No. Um, I'm, I, to be honest, the most likely thing I'm probably going to do is Zinchenko to Otamendi. Mendy. Mm. However, I might not make any. At the moment, I've got Cantwell sitting as first sub with a nice fixture this weekend. So Sinchenko doesn't play, it's, I'm not too fast. Mm. So I, it's every chance I will roll this week. Uh, FPL H2H. I'd love to know what H2H stands for. Maybe I'll have to click into the profile to have a look. Is moving away from Mo Salah to Aubameyang over the coming weeks a viable and sensible option? I am concerned because I already own Aubameyang and loads of people are fucking talking about getting Aubameyang for this run up till game week 16. And you know what happens when everyone brings a player in? He fucking blanks. So I'd rather everyone just avoid it, if possible. <laughs> just leave him alone. Don't touch him. Yes, please. Can you all stay away from triple Liverpool defence? I know you will. Mm. Can you all stay away <clears> from <throat> Harry Kane? I know you will. Mm -hmm. See, it's less of a problem. Follow my, follow my players. Mm. Talking about triple things, is it time to consider... Sorry, wrong question. Is Triple Chelsea overload? And that's coming in from FPL Devotee. Tamori, Mount, Tammy is the obvious three that people are going for. No, it's not. And the reason it's not is because of value, right? At this point, 4.6, 6.6, 7.7. You're not talking about premium slots. Creeping. Manchester's coming so quietly <laughs> all of a sudden. Gets. Creeping. No, it's not. And it's particularly not for these next few fixtures. And actually... What it also enables you, you'll probably get value out of all three of them because mm. of the fixtures and because they'll probably be winning games. And then it allows you to move away from the one you don't really want. You won't want all three longer term. A little bit like when I wildcarded over Christmas and I went Pogba, Marshall, Rashford because I couldn't make my mind up. Mm. One more question to end your pod, shall we? Go on then. Because then we can go and watch Man United, Arsenal. Manchild, what is your question of the week? I'm putting him on the spot it's now. His audio's live, come on. Yeah, man. What's Westwood doing? What is Ashley, oh, Ashley Westwood, Westwood doing for Burnley? Not Burnley, a Burnley had a two-two. Uh, wasn't, wasn't there some sort of meme about him having a coffee at, at Villa Park or something? I didn't get it. <laughs> Burnley fans tell me I didn't a, get a it. meme about him having a it's, coffee. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. So Ashley Westwood has scored so far this season nineteen points. Absolutely bang. Um, he has. Uh, scored his one assist and one clean sheet, which was last week against Norwich. Other than that, he has done nothing for the entire season. You keeping him? I didn't have him to begin with. Oh, <laughs> so of all the players in the game that you could have asked, you've asked about DJ Westwood, okay. less than 1% owned and one return all season. Make sure he's doing all right, you know. Well, well, the <laughs> <laughs> I honestly wish I could play the game this guy, the way this guy does. I don't. <laughs> it's funny. I I put out a tweet. It's, it is interesting. I put out a tweet on Saturday about or Sunday about having no Salah and no uh, Kane and uh, and that in my squad. And I had a few people, you know, you're going to drop in rank and enjoy life down in the low lower ranks and all the rest of it. And I was, I was thinking about it. Like no one's having a, a go. I'm not saying people are having a dig, but I'm like, I know, but I'm going to have fun. Like, it is a game at the end of the day. Unless, it is you, a game. unless you're playing for money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, and that's the Sky game, which we will talk about on well, Wednesday. Well, playing their mini leagues for money, et cetera. I, I get the, uh, the importance, et cetera. We had uh, another 40-odd questions. And uh, no doubt if James and I are twiddling with our Twitters during the Arsenal, Man United Arsenal game, we might reply to a few there. We won't. Why not? Because it's before the pod goes out. And then no, but they, we then can they reply to them. They won't listen. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, I've got my question answered. I don't even have to fucking tune in now. Maybe. Whereas they're all sitting there now going, didn't even re do any questions, did they? All right. Maybe we'll get less draft. replies. Save all as draft and hit send after the game. Schedule oh, the tweets for later. Yeah, uh, who's going to do that, are they? I don't know. Let people know uh, what else is on the show this I, week, I haven't please. Got the, I haven't got the time anymore. Tomorrow, Tottenham. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Spurs, Aurea Solutions. Um Kane, Sun, particularly, maybe yeah. a bit on Ericsson. Um, and then obviously we do that a bit more on Thursday because we've got a Ricky Saunders on with Sam FPL single, Seagull, Clash of the Correspondents. We'll don't even know if he's single. West <laughs> he could be single. And this, Sam, Sam, Sam's young. If he's single, he's smart. If he's, he's not he's, single, he's uh, probably... Yeah. He's just started uni, so uh, he, he, I hope he is single because that, that's the time to be single. He's... he's, 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 he's he, <laughs> FPL single. <laughs> Why is there not? It's true. Why is there not an FPL single? We talked about it uh, ages ago about setting up an FPL dating service, FPL dating <laughs> website. Do you remember one of the pods? That came it's up a as few a people on Twitter would not get a fucking date, mate. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
Wednesday will do Sky. Probably yes. quite a bit of focus around Liverpool's fixture with Leicester. Friday we'll do final plan. Um, we'll reveal what Sidge is doing with his <coughs> final wild card. Captaincy yep. faults for the weekend. My uh, fault at the moment right now is that I'm back in Harry Kane. Again, there are uh, a midweek full of European football fixtures. I suggest this is a good week to be patient. Mm -hmm. Uh other than that, we do appreciate everything uh, that you send through us on Twitter and the comments and the videos in YouTube. We could always do with more likes, reviews, shares um, and spreading the FPL word. We do hope you enjoyed this show and do join us over the course of the week for all the other stuff we're putting out. Ciao for now. Cue music, man, child. You're over there, aren't you? Fantasy Football Show.